The Mauser Model 98, or Gewehr 98, really is one of the most important bolt-action military rifles of all time. It was strong, it was reliable, and it was safe. As with some other military small arms designers who became famous for infantry rifles, Paul Mauser cut his teeth on artillery. And I think that his uh, sense of solid breaching and solid uh, lockup and, and some of these principles of a very simple mechanism that was very robust and very uh, sort of definitive in the way that it operated uh, affected his design for the Model 98. In the development of a succession of his designs, Paul Mauser was fixated on the issue of shooter safety. He had lost an eye in an accident with one of his guns. And so he had a very personal uh, dedication to making sure that his designs uh, were safe. And as his designs progressed, as he went from the 91 to the 93 to the 95 to eventually to the 98, he kept adding safety features to them. The G98's bolt is equipped with, first of all, three lugs. Forward lugs that will engage locking surfaces inside the receiver, but then also the third safety lug that's there just in the event that there's a ruptured case or an overpressure. In addition to that, the G98's bolt has two gas relief holes on its bottom so that if there is a failure of some kind, gas is vented downward rather into the face of the shooter. Even if it's vented into the shooter's face though, they have a gas shield on the cocking piece that prevents it from getting in your eyes. So it's not just an effective military design, but it's also a safe design on top of that. This is a rifle that is mostly cocked on opening and is fully cocked on closing. It has what we call today the claw extractor. If you look at the right side of a Mauser 98 bolt, you will see that big old claw. And what that extractor does is grip the cartridge as it is presented from the magazine fully into the chamber, and it's called controlled round feed. Uh, if you want to know, was it a good idea? Just look at the Model 70. Look at the Kimber today. Those are features that are still in use. When it debuted in 1898, the German Gewehr 98 Mauser became the benchmark of all subsequent bolt action design for years and years and years. The gun's antecedents go back to Mauser's original designs in the late 1860s in an effort to replace the, the needle gun, the Zunnadelgewehr of the German army. The 98 first saw uh, combat use with uh, German infantry during the Boxer Rebellion and uh, went on to become the standard service rifle of the German army throughout World War I. And its shortened carbine version uh, was the standard infantry rifle of the German army throughout the Second World War. The Gewehr 98 was chambered for 792 by 57. We know it today as 8 millimeter, and it had an advantage over some earlier guns in that it was clip loading. That was something the Mausers really pioneered. And you open up the action, it's a five round internal magazine with a flush fitting bottom plate. And you take those five rounds, put the stripper clip in the notch, push it down, and now you have a fully loaded rifle. The sights on the G98 are what we call the Lange Vizier sights. Collectors will refer to them as the roller coaster because of the distinctive shape of the rear sight assembly. Um, with graduations from 200 meters to 2,000 meters, the reality is that after the development of the Spitzergeschoss, the pointed bullet, is that, that that farthest out setting, which is written as 200 meters on the Lange Vizier sight, is really more like a 400 meter setting. Uh, but there are means of compensating for that, and they do that during the course of the First World War. 
And so what you have is a rifle that is rugged, dependable, accurate, hard hitting, and Imperial Germany has it. By the outbreak of war in August 1914, the Germans have around two and a half, two and a quarter, two and a half million Gewehr 98s in the hands of their troops. During the course of the war, they're gonna make another seven million of these rifles. Now, not only are they going to German units, but they're also going to Turkish units. In fact, in 1917, one of the German factories, every rifle it made, went to arm their Turkish allies. This firearm provides Imperial Germany with impressive firepower, impressive firepower that it uses throughout the war. And although it was a masterpiece of Paul Mauser's expertise and brilliance, it could not make a difference in the inevitable outcome of the Great War 